Jeremy, welcome. Thanks for having me, Zach. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah. Absolutely. Go, so, so I actually first learned of Jeremy again through reading Paulina's The Profile. Um, <laughs> I asked for an intro. Um, I mean, you might be asked, you might be touching on this, but I, I did watch the, the video of Jeremy in the, when the pandemic first hit back in the spring. Um, and he was trying to uh, develop a relationship with someone that lived like across on the next building. So they used to communicate from the rooftop. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he eventually met her um, inside of a plastic sphere, which I thought was pretty, pretty cool. So I was like, this is really cool. I love artists, by the way. My mom's an artist. Um, Jeremy's a photographer. His mom's an artist also. And I just thought it'd be a really nice touch uh, for our conference if we, again, mix it up in a very eclectic style. So I'm gonna turn it over to Polina. I will jump off and then come back with some Q&A um, later. Awesome. Thanks. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. <laughs> Your your drawing is looking really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. That's so awesome. <laughs> um, so okay, so the way I was first introduced to Jeremy was that I was this was the beginning of quarantine, and I had just gotten on TikTok, and the first video <laughs> that I see is Jeremy or this guy for me at the time. I didn't know who you were. Um, asking a girl out via drone, you sent your phone number to her in, on the following rooftop. And I was like, this is so cool. So I, I reached out to you and uh, I interviewed you. But when you did that video and it went viral, first of all, tell me what compelled you to do that at that time. Yeah, so I was just sitting in my room actually where I'm at right now. And I started a photo series, I'm a photographer, mm -hmm. this is my background. And I started a photo series where I was documenting people on their rooftops right when lockdown happened because here in New York, it was like, you know, it's the epicenter of everything. And um, of everything. Yeah, of everything. Yeah. No. Um, but yeah, so I noticed like people starting to go to their roofs way more frequently than normal and doing all these everyday activities that they would normally do. Like, like instead of going to the gym, they would be working out on the roof or or just dancing on the roof or painting or, you know, everyone was doing their thing except it was on the roof because it was the one safe space to go and get some fresh air and sunlight that wasn't like in stuck in your apartment. So, and here in my neighborhood, a lot of buildings have roof access or you could get to the roof like illegally, but everyone still does it. So I just noticed uh, everyone going to their roof and I was mostly looking out my window noticing it and taking, making a photo series out of it. Um, and that's when I noticed her like right across the street from me um, on her roof and I wanted to get in touch with her somehow. So that's how it all happened. That's awesome. So, okay, so you sent her your phone number, she texted you, then you kind of met when you were in this like weird bubble thing. How's it going with Tori, which is her name, right? Yeah, so I, I got her number because I, I flew my drone I, I'm also a drone photographer, videographer. So um, I had my drone in my closet and I just figured I'd put my number on it and fly it across the street. So that's what I did. And then we got in touch. And then and then it was like a fun challenge to like go on dates with her, but while being responsible of COVID. So yeah. And yeah. Uh, didn't you just release the latest part of that series? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Awesome. You guys, if, if somebody can drop the link uh, for <laughs> Jeremy's video, that'd be great. So during quarantine, you did a series, like you just mentioned, the, um, the quarantine rooftop culture. Um, and you documented people reading, exercising, hanging out, you know, with each, well, by themselves in the beginning. But there's nothing unique or interesting about that under normal circumstances. But why do you think, what do you think made those photos so powerful? I think because I mean it was a very it was a very uh, unique time in our history. There's never been I've never experienced a lockdown, or I don't know when the last lockdown like this really happened. And so everyone, I mean, everyone was feeling different things, and just I think just taking photos of people, uh, you could see it in the photos. I mean, this was like we're just trying to be human, and like a lot of us, especially in New York, in our small apartments 
uh, felt like we're in cages at times. Some of these apartments don't even have window light and you can't really go outside unless you were getting groceries or anything at that moment. Um, so yeah, like people were going to their roofs and it was like, I think that was like the only moment when people really felt like themselves and got that sun. This was also right when uh, it started to get warm again after a long winter. So like the weather started to get really nice, but you still like weren't supposed to go outside unless you were getting, unless you were getting groceries or necessities. So yeah, people were just trying to make the best of it. New Yorkers are resilient. And um, this, per this series kind of just celebrated that. Speaking of resilience, when I called you last time uh, for the interview, I caught you in a very emotional moment because yeah. one of your rooftop photos actually ended up as the cover of New York Magazine, which is massive. I saw it, I saw it in Dwayne Reed and I was like, oh my God, that's Jeremy. It was crazy. But I remember you told me just an, you made an offhand comment, but I remember it. You said, uh, there's been it, this mean that moment meant a lot to you because there were so many times where you almost quit photography. So what have you learned about forging ahead with a craft you love? Many times it happens in entrepreneurship as well, when maybe family and friends are, may not be supportive or you hit these hurdles that are like, is this the end? Yeah, I think especially in the art world, um, we just compare ourselves to each other, like with, you know, I. Uh, yeah, I just see other people. I mean, we all see other people around us. Some some are way more successful than us, and some are way more talented than us, and we're better than. I mean, we just compare ourselves to each other. So it's just like, yeah. I mean, I try my best to not do that. We all have our own path and our own lane, and everyone making art. Um, we we're only capable of making our art. No one else can really make the art that we make. And once you realize that, you could find find your own success. Yeah. So uh, when I talked to you, you said, uh, I don't know, I think there must be something about being stuck in a box that inspires uh, creativity because we were all stuck in our apartments when I was asking about the drone. Do you think that boredom can actually spark creativity? And when do your best ideas come? Yeah, so I found it did for me. I don't think it does for everyone or nor does it have to because it was just uh, obviously a crazy time. It was very easy to like sit back and not be in the mood to like make stuff or create stuff. But, um, yeah, for me, like I, I almost always have, I mean, I've always lived with roommates and, um, my roommate actually went back home to be with his family. Cause that this was like right at the beginning when everything was uncertain. So he just wanted to be in his family. So I was home alone in my apartment, like stuck in my apartment for like four months. And, um, I found that and I'm normally like a very outgoing social person, like doing this, doing that, always on the go, very New York City, you know, and uh, this was like the first time I was really like, I didn't have any temptations to go out and hang out or do this or that. I was like stuck in my apartment with my camera, with my computer, with all my tools I needed to create. And um, yeah, I just like, I was very, I saw the rooftop thing happening. So I was inspired to um make this series and then from there it was kind of like a snowball effect I just uh I felt like I just wanted to create more and more I was, um and I was I was just all by myself stuck in my apartment I didn't like go out and shoot even though I was tempted during that time to like document New York City um walking around in the streets it wasn't you know responsible or necessarily safe to do that so right. I'm lucky like you know I'm in this space where I had like a very a, a long lens and uh and yeah I could just I have a uh, rooftop access so I could like shoot all around <laughs> and kept myself busy and yeah yeah but what's interesting about that is like you noticed you know what I mean like a lot of us like I was out here I was looking at other people on roofs but I was never like you know what that's a good idea it, it's it's about the noticing and and just having an eye for that um, tell me, so pre-COVID, uh, you did this Today I Photographed uh, project where you challenged yourself to take a portrait of a different person every day for two years. First of all, can you tell me why that repetition and consistency was good for you, important to you? Yeah, so that was at a time when, so I started this series back in, I think I started 2017, beginning of 2017. So 
it was at a time where I, I realized I was a photographer, but I still didn't necessarily have my style or my, or, or, or my main subjects that I wanted to photograph. I was kind of a little bit all over the place. And I started to realize like my favorite part about photography was portrait photography. Cause I love, mm. I'm a people person. I love people and uh, using the camera as a tool to like connect with people I found is what I enjoy the most about photography. And I, I realized that a lot of time, often when I was, whether I was traveling or just walking around my camera, I would see someone and I'd want to photograph them. But, you know, I, I didn't have, I, I would just give myself an excuse to not photograph them because that's the easiest thing to do. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it could be very daunting to like walk up to someone and ask to take their portrait. So yeah, I, I was like, I would get like, you know, a little mad at myself, like later in the day, I'd be like, damn, I should have, I should have photographed that person. Um, so that's when I kind of, it's funny, you mentioned Honey before. So I had, this was inspired by a couple of different people project. You actually mentioned Casey Neistat too. Yeah. So I, I was, in, I was very inspired by Casey Neistat doing his daily vlogs at the time. And just like that drive to be able to put something out every day that people are interested in and telling this New York story and combined with uh, Honey, you know, taking portraits of strangers and telling their stories. And then combined with my friend in school at the time, Justin Aversano, who was, uh, he, uh, he did a portrait of someone every day for a year on their birthday. So a big challenge of that was like finding someone every That's day. Cool. That's cool. It was their birthday and he would like meet them and take their Polaroid. Um, so I think this idea of today I photographed was born from those three ideas together. Everything's a remix, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. And then right when I got that idea, I was like, all right, I'll do this project sometime. And then I think, I think I like got in the shower that day. I get, I get my, my ideas mostly come in the shower. I'm a very shower, big shower idea guy. And <laughs> I think I, I I'm pretty sure I was in the shower when I was like okay I can't just start anytime I just have to start now I have to why can't I start right now so it was that day that I got the idea for the project and I started that day even though I didn't have my uh, main camera on me um so from that day forward um I did the project today I photographed which is where every day at least once a day I would go up to a stranger photograph them and tell a little story about them Wow. Zach? I, I have a quick question, Jeremy. So do you consider yourself to be an entrepreneur? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I would consider <laughs> myself more an artist. I did I did start my business officially um, last year, but I wouldn't necessarily, I don't think I'd consider myself an entrepreneur, but I, I would say I have entrepreneurial uh, tendencies. Well, my mom, who I think is 83, I, I can't remember. She, she lives in Florida now. And uh, she recently told me that she, and she's an artist. She's a, she was a sculptor um, and also a painter. Um, but she recently told me that she considers herself to be an entrepreneur because she was creating things to sell, um, which kind of makes sense because it was her business. It was never profitable, but um, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> I hope yours is. Um, but it's interesting. I don't, I don't think that's mutually exclusive, being an artist in being an entrepreneur. Um, I was, I'm just curious. I don't really, I don't really know many artists that identify that way. Yeah. So also as an artist, I don't really, I mean, maybe this will change at some point, but I'm not, I've never been too interested in selling my photos as I selling my photos to people or prints necessarily. I did a print sale recently, um, as a fundraiser mm -hmm. during, uh, yeah, during April, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was fun. But I don't know. I with photography, I, I've always felt like uncomfortable, like selling selling my work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, especially since I, I like photograph mostly people. So if I did sell prints, it was like if I photograph this person, and I, I feel like I'd want to pay them too. But I might have not been in contact with them for forever long, and just, I don't know. There's there's some interesting legal questions there too. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Paulina. Yeah, no, that that's super. Uh, that's interesting because I also uh, grapple with that. Like, am I a writer or am I an entrepreneur? It's like it's it's two very different parts of your brain that you have to be able to access um, in order to kind of do both. 
Okay, so um, so would you so you did this today? I photographed you. Decided you would do it every day for two years. But like on the days where you woke up sick or you just like weren't feeling it, did you do? Did you put in place any accountability uh, things that would keep you going? So what kept me going is I was my biggest critic. I couldn't, you know, I wouldn't let myself uh, not take a portrait that day. Like mm. every day I had to take a portrait. Any Anyone who I was friends with, around with, I was actually in a, like a relationship for most of this, uh, most of this time. And I'd feel bad because if I, if it was later in the day and I didn't get my portrait of the day yet with a stranger, you know, I might have been like, out to dinner or something or like had plans and like I wouldn't be fully present because like my main priority was this project and I I had to stay true to myself I didn't I wasn't gonna you know I wasn't gonna miss out one day um I think the biggest hurdle is uh towards the beginning of the project actually my, my apartment got broken into and I got I got a lot of my camera stuff stolen I I, I didn't have a I didn't have a camera for like a couple days so I think those days I photographed on my on my phone mm -hmm. um and it was tempting to just like quit the project right there but I just looked at it as it was just it was just a hurdle I just had to keep going yeah and you also did it publicly right so that adds a certain level of accountability where people are going to be like where the hell's the portrait Jeremy I think that's super important when you're doing yeah. anything absolutely and then I think another important part was I had to find a time where I needed to end the project because my original goal was doing it for a year but after a year I felt like I it wasn't completed I needed I was growing as an artist um through it that's a big part about it uh I got I got better at portraits um by doing it because I was doing it any every day you know the more you do anything the better you get at it uh technically but also a lot about a, lot, a big thing about portrait photography is chemistry with your subject and mm building some sort of relationship even even if it's a five minute session you know so um yeah i felt like i was i, I wanted to keep going so that's why I, I kept going for i think i did it 668 days in a row wow like a portrait that's really crazy yeah um so. yo go ahead oh i was, no, gonna I was, say, I was just gonna and, uh, i was gonna say you? that i mean that that's entrepreneurial perseverance for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair fair you got that going um, for you yeah so I think the hardest part was like after all those days like telling myself to stop but it was to a point where I felt like the project wasn't necessarily growing I, I went I came to I reached that peak and uh it was hard for me to swallow that for a second because this project was my baby and uh so now I, I still do the project but just in a different way I'm not doing it every day um I'm doing it when I feel like it and I put more work into it when I do mm. it. So now I'll do a portrait and I'll do a little vi a video interview as well. And I, I'll make, I, I think they're, I like to think they're like uh, more interesting or important stories. Cause sometimes since I was doing it every day and I would do only one person, sometimes it would be like, you know, not that interesting of a story. Um, yeah. Zach, do you have a question for us? No, no, I'm good. I'm just listening. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd say if anyone, yeah, if anyone wants to check it out, uh, it's a project I'm really proud of. It's on, on Instagram. It's just called Today I Photographed. Yeah, and the thing that I loved about that project is that, first of all, I'm obviously a big fan of people as well, but what you were able to capture in their facial expressions and their body language, it, it was really, really cool. Um, so what are some of the elements that you look for in telling a good narrative through photography? Like, what do you look for in the people? Yeah, so I don't know. I'm, I'm walking. Oh, it's a great question. I think everyone has a story to tell. So some it's just sometimes easier to talk to some people than other people. Sometimes it takes a little longer to squeeze out the story. But I think, um, yeah, just the bet. I, I think the best way to get a story out of someone is if you're asking someone to open up like a stranger. So the best way to get someone else to open up is if you open up a little bit about yourself. So you're on the same level um yeah so that i think that's my strategy of just be human just uh 
yeah we're all find some common ground like i i photograph some people that we have very very different totally different ways but uh if you find some common denominator and then you could uh get get a little closer to them and more comfortable with them they could open up and tell you the story Totally. Um, the last time I talked to you, you said, um, basically, once this is all over, we're going to understand how great life is again. <laughs> I think you meant like real life. Um, now that it's November and we're still kind of indoors, what changes have you seen in yourself and others that you think are like going to stick around? Hmm. What change am I going to see? Yeah, I think... Uh... I don't know. I think I'm just like appreciating things more in general. Um, Cause once you get anything taken away from you, it's like, you don't know what, you, what how does that song go? You don't know what you got till it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that. Yeah. So I think uh, once I realized I got all these things, like the simple things that I love doing, such as like riding my bike outside and I couldn't do that. Um, yeah. Once, once I have like these things, now that I have, some of these things back like I can go on bike rides now um yeah it just makes me be very so much more appreciative of all these things in life that we like took for like, you know never really thought about twice even like right here you can see my cloud lamp uh I never really I don't know I never really thought about clouds too much as a as a kid I was actually like didn't I never really liked clouds because I was trying to play outside and the cloud would block the sun and I would, I would get mad at these clouds. Um, but now that I was being stuck in my apartment over quarantine and I was looking out my window a lot, I see all these clouds now and now they're like some of my favorite things. That's why I got this cloud light now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> see, you great. notice things that the rest of us absolutely do not. Um, one question here I'm seeing uh, from Eva it says, who is the most memorable person you've met in your project? <laughs> Also, that is my mom, by the way. So, oh! Uh, <laughs> Wait, that's, that's awesome. amazing. <laughs> Thanks for the questions, mom. So supportive. <laughs> I love her. Uh, who was the most memorable person I met from the series? Oh, I there's so many now. I can't. I can't even. I can't even pick one. I'm sorry. I don't know about that question. It's hard I'm to. Just, I'm just impressed that your mom asked the question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. A little mo motherly love shining through. I love that. Exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, Jeremy, I, I think we touched on this idea a little bit of like the art of noticing. Um, I think a lot of us just kind of like plow through our day and don't take time to notice. How can you just tell me very specifically or give me an example of how you get your ideas when you feel stuck? How do you get an idea? Hmm. Yeah, when I feel st stuck, I think the first thing is, you know, I, th I think getting stuck is a good thing because yeah, it, it's, it's, you dig yourself out of this hole. If you're, yeah, w when I'm stuck, I kind of, I mean, I will go and look at other, I have a lot of artist friends and mm. whether it's Instagram or whether it's different, you know, artists, websites, whatever it is, I'm just, I get so inspired by other photographers, artists, even reading. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of like, compared to other people I know, I just like easily get inspired by a lot of things. So it's like, it's hard for me to answer that question for everyone. Cause uh, you know, uh, that's, that's just like not a problem I usually deal with. Like I actually, my, I think my problem is more of, I want to make too much stuff. And then I have too many things on my plate on, in my notes that I want to make. And then I never get around to making them. Um, so how do yeah. you prioritize how do you structure your day um so i'm a morning person and i like to start my day i i wake up i kind of have a slow morning a lot of times i just like to take it easy check my phone drink some tea um i usually exercise in the morning or late morning early afternoon um i find that especially that's something i really picked up over uh quarantine because i'm fortunate that i have in my apartment building there's like this very this, there's a tiny gym in the basement that like no one uses so when quarantine started um and i was home i was in my apartment all day one of the thing one of the places i would go to leave is just downstairs and uh go work out and i found that uh 
even just a really small short workout just uh sweating it out a little bit it, it, it helps me mentally and like creatively to get some ideas flowing so um yeah between that um so what what else is going on with my day is that the question no no, no. I, I was just curious how you structure it and like what you prioritize and whether you leave room for like you know let me be inspired because most people here here's the biggest myth i think in terms of writing is people say like they expect you to wait for your muse to arrive and then you start writing for me i've become a better writer because i write consistently every single day do you find the same like do you do you wait to be inspired or do you kind of force it by doing <laughs> yeah i kind of just i kind of just force it to do it i think yeah what what are you so okay for everybody who's seen the viral videos you had with the drone and then the bubble um then the helicopter do you plan those things really far in advance what is your creative process like yeah so i'm a very last second person i'm not much of a planner with anything really um even when like i'm trying to plan like a trip somewhere i i'm kind of more of a person i like to you know, do it in the next, the next day or the next couple of days, as opposed to like planning a trip, like three or four months out. Same with like projects. Um, you know, the, today I photographed the project. I got the idea. I started right there. This rooftop series, I got the idea right then and there. I started the project. Um, this whole viral thing that happened, it was like, you know, I think we live in a world that just like the turnover is so fast. Like um if you get an idea or you want to do something and you sit on it someone else is going to do it so um yeah I like to just uh if if I if I get an idea for something I just want to do it <laughs> but then there's there's definitely other ideas that I've gotten and they're still in my notes and I just haven't gotten around to and I don't know if I ever will and same here <laughs> that's so hard to do so I, I know that because I'm not like as excited about that idea as I was and uh, so I know like the other thing is if I get an idea and I'm excited about it, mm. I, tell my, I really want myself, I, I kind of push myself to act on it right then and there. Cause if I don't do it then and there, this is just how I work personally. If I don't do it then and there, then the chances of that idea coming to life are less and less and less. So. Are there any exciting ideas you have right now that you want to share with us? Um, Nothing, nothing as big as I've been doing. I think I, I'm taking a small break from uh, personal projects. My, my personal project right now, actually, that I'm excited about is uh, I've been scrapbooking. So I, uh, I, got this, <laughs> I got this big, and for anyone who's never scrapbooked before, highly recommend it. This is my first time doing it. I just got this big blank book of pages. And I've just, uh, I don't know if I could, I could bring it out for a second if you want me to, but I don't know if it might take a second. Um, but yeah, from uh, all these Polaroids that I have to notes that I've written or other people have written me or um, all these press passes as a photographer that I photographed, whether it was this event or this festival, um, I've had all these things just sitting in my drawer and all these amazing memories and uh yeah I just decided them to I just decided to put it all in one place and I've been like taping it gluing it in this book writing notes along with it and that's been really fun so <laughs> that's really cool. it, it, yeah and it's just for me too it's not like I'm gonna be posting it online or anything so I try to I think something I've learned over my over my career is like it's really important to have personal projects and it's cool if it goes viral or whatever but like it's, it's, you just need to find that balance, like with your work, your client work, your work projects and your personal projects, because photography is my, is my love and passion. And once you make it your career, it, uh, that goes with anything that you love and you, it turns in your career. I think you gotta find that balance and you still enjoy it and not like start to hate it because gotcha. you're doing things for other people and not for yourself. So yeah, I got a, I got, I do have a question or two as you close this out. First one is, uh, somebody loves the painting over your right shoulder <laughs> and they want to know who did it. Yeah. So I actually painted that. <laughs> um, I painted it. Yeah. With the, with a roommate, like four apartments ago at like 4 AM and it's, it's just a good memory. So yeah. 
So if you get an offer to sell it, you'll have to think about it. <laughs> um, and then someone else, somebody else wrote along the same line. They said, many artists are uncomfortable with the business of art, but you still have to pay your bills. Um, so you don't feel ashamed to do so. And she asked, is there an artistic guilt that comes, that gives you that perspective? My brother is an artist and it took him 10 years to finally be okay with selling his work. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm open to wanting to sell my work, <clears throat> but I've just never been totally injured. It's just, it's just made me uncomfortable. I don't know why. I'll, yeah, through, through photography, the way I've made most of my money is just like shooting for brand, for clients, for brands, for, for them. So, um, yeah, I mean, maybe one day, I th like this, this rooftop series that I did, that's something I would be interested to explore in a gallery setting and possibly sell. But the thing that makes me uncomfortable about it is that, you know, I photographed people that they might not even know. So right. if I'm selling an image of, uh, a person on their roof I don't know it's just it, I, I don't know how it sits with me you know so yeah well that 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 has some some definite legal issues that would have to get involved <laughs> um anyway yeah. um I have one last one um it says the person asked did you get any formal business education at the school of visual arts or anywhere else they say yeah. all artists or this this person believes all artists are running a business and need this um, I know when I did a fine arts program at Cornell, uh, this was not the case and I think it's needed. Yeah, so I, that's a great question. So I'm definitely, I, you know, I run my own business. Like this is like me being a photographer. It's like, I think five to 10% of it is actually taking photos. The rest of it is pre-production, emails. Um, you know, <clears throat> it's so much stuff besides besides the actual photography part. And I didn't, and I'm kind of, it's kind of upsetting that I didn't learn much business about photography or how the real world world works, how taxes yeah. work. Um, learned none of this in school. And it's frustrating because I went to a really, a really prestigious art school. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wish they would teach that stuff. So <laughs> I think that should be implemented in more art schools um schools in general um so i didn't like have to figure it out myself through my friends yep. you're just asking through my yeah so, so, I'm, so I'm, I'm still learning i'm still learning this stuff and getting better so yeah so i'm going to close this out with just one com one more comment from your mom um if you don't mind you might find it <laughs> embarrassing but it's always fun to do that so, so so she she just wrote one of jeremy's first photos was taken uh in ut is that in Utah? Yeah, in Utah, yeah. of me jumping off a rock and it was published in the New York Times. A person wrote to Jeremy and wanted to buy it and Jeremy just sent him a copy. <laughs> I, I don't even remember that happening, but it sounds like something I would do. I think that's perfect. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't right. know. <laughs> okay, well, we are out of time. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Well, thank you um, so much. Thank you, Jeremy. And Paulina. Jack, that was awesome. Jeremy. And thanks everyone for watching. Hope everyone has a great day. Absolutely. And Claude, by the way, Claude, you're just getting so many compliments on the on the uh, on the chat for your drawings. People really love them. So I just wanted to give you a shout out for that.